880, KIXI, Mercer Island, Seattle, Tacoma. Good evening, I'm Bob Brooks, your host for the Kixie Saturday Night Spotlight. Well, I hope you've got a bowl of popcorn all set, family gathered around the old Philco, and you're all set to enjoy some live radio drama. I want you to remember a time when radio truly was theater of the imagination. Let your mind fill in the blanks and put faces to the voices. And just to help your imagination a little, I'll tell you that the voices of the doorman and Santa Claus in tonight's play are Chris Wheatus and Bob Newman. You might remember them as J.P. Patches and Gertrude. Now, let's switch you to the Seattle Museum of History and Industry for tonight's Kixie Saturday Night Spotlight. <laughs> by Felix Bunnell and starring Chris Wiedis, Bob Newman, Tracy Conway, and Dave DeLackey. <laughs> Frederick and Nelson, the late great Seattle department store with its trademark brush, script, green and white logo, got to start back in 1890 when Donald Edward Frederick came to Seattle from Colorado. Frederick partnered with fellow Coloradan James Meacham in a business venture to sell second-hand household furnishings from a tiny shop on First Avenue. The pair capitalized on the economic boom that accompanied the rebuilding of the city following the Great Seattle Fire of June 6, 1889. Soon after, the pair was joined by Nels B. Nelson, another Colorado native recently relocated to Seattle. Not long after that, James Meacham, suffering from poor health, sold his share of the business to Donald and Nels. With that, Frederick and Nelson was officially born, with Frederick vowing to create the largest and finest store west of the Mississippi River and north of the city of San Francisco. Under D.E. Frederick's leadership, Frederick and Nelson continued to expand in the years following the Klondike Gold Rush of 1897. Having outgrown their First Avenue location, construction began in 1915 on the now famous Fifth Avenue and Pine Street store. Known at the time as Frederick's Folly for its then remote location away from the city's retail core, the new store opened in 1918 and was an immediate success. The building was substantially enlarged in a major remodel in 1952 with the addition of four upper floors. Though Nelson passed away in 1907 and Fredericks sold Frederick and Nelson to Chicago-based retailer Marshall Field in 1929, the store remained a Northwest favorite for decades. A local ownership group purchased the store from Marshall Field in the late 1980s and during centennial celebrations in 1990, the owners and the community had high hopes for another century of excellence. Those hopes faded and the downtown store and other Frederick and Nelson locations closed for good in 1993. Nordstrom renovated the building at Fifth and Pine, establishing their flagship store there in 1998. Many fond memories of Frederick and Nelson remain. From the doormen who greeted shoppers to holiday decorations, green and white gift boxes and shopping bags, and Frango milkshakes. Memories of Fredericks, along with some imagined characters and circumstances, provided the inspiration for tonight's radio play, called A Green and White Christmas. Our story concerns the Larson family and their plans to mark Christmas Eve back in 1954. Seattle was a smaller town then, and it was a simpler time everywhere. President Eisenhower was midway through his first term. Seattle's mayor was Alan Pomeroy. Washington's governor was Arthur Langley. The giant red neon R had been rotating atop the Rainier Brewery for only a few years. Bobo the Gorilla was celebrating the first anniversary of his arrival at Woodland Park Zoo. The slow-motion four hydroplane had a few months earlier raced in another sea fair on Lake Washington. All around the Pacific Northwest, families were preparing to celebrate the holidays together. 
The Larsons are a typical Seattle family of the 1950s. Jim Larson is a native Seattleite who works hard for a living. Jim's wife, Sarah, was born here, too. She cares for their 10-year-old son, Jake, and 8-year-old daughter, Susie, and manages their compact home in one of Seattle's North End neighborhoods. When our story begins on the morning of Christmas Eve, 1954, Jim's in Portland, Oregon, having just finished a business meeting and getting ready to head home. Operator? May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, please. I'd like to place a long-distance call to Seattle. The number is Atwater 3474. Certainly, sir. How would you like to pay for the call? Uh, I think I have enough change here. Uh, how much will it be? 35 cents for two minutes. Uh, good. That's, that's all I've got. Attention, Seattle-bound passengers. We are now boarding on track 12. Seattle passengers may now board on track 12. Doggone it, that's my train. Stand by, sir. Your call is connecting. Hello? Hi, hon. Hi, Jim. How did the meeting go? Uh, it went great. Oh. I think we've got a good chance of getting the account. I kind of rushed things toward the end of the presentation. I told him I had a train to catch and a family to get to home for Christmas. <gasps> that's so... That's such good news about the account. I'll keep my fingers crossed. How soon does your train leave? Uh, just a few minutes. The cab got me here sooner than I thought. Portland's not the big city that Seattle is nowadays. There was hardly any traffic on the streets. What's the weather like down there? Boy, it's a lot colder than it was yesterday, that's for sure. I can't wait to see you and the kids. We'll be waiting for you at Frederick and Nelson at 4 o'clock at the Paul Bunyan Room. That's terrific. I'm really looking forward to being home. How's Jake and Susie? They excited about Christmas? Oh, they're excited, all right. They've been in their rooms all morning. I think they're making presents for us. Oh, my gosh. Presents? <laughs> uh, that reminds me. I have a little shopping to do this afternoon when I get into town. I've got to go this looking... This is the operator. I'm sorry, sir. Your time is up. Please deposit 35 cents for an additional two minutes or hang up. I'm out of change, operator. Uh, love you, Sarah. See you at four. Me too. Bye. Was that Daddy on the phone, Mom? It sure was, Jake. He's on his way home. What have you and Susie been up to? Oh, nothing. Just getting ready for Christmas. We've got presents for you and Daddy. You do? I can't wait to see what they are. As the day progresses, Sarah passes the time baking and preparing food for the family's traditional Christmas dinner. Susie watches Wanda Wanda on King TV. And Jake plays outside with some of his fellow Cub Scouts. In the early afternoon, Sarah, Susie, and Jake put the finishing touches on the family Christmas tree. Mmm, mmm, the tree smells so fresh. Jake, have you found your father's favorite ornament yet? The silver snowflake you made for him? I sure have. I put it right here on top of the hi-fi, right where Dad can find it tonight and hang it up on the tree. Terrific. You know how much he loves that silver snowflake. Well, what about you, Susie? How are the cranberry strings coming along? I'm almost finished. How soon can we leave to go and meet Daddy? Let's leave here no later than a quarter past three, so we can be sure to meet your dad at four o'clock. I can hardly wait to see Dad and to see all the great decorations at Frederick and Nelson. I'm excited, too. Our trip to Frederick's is a family tradition your father and I started before you kids were born, even before we were married and still at the U. Can we get Frango milkshakes at the Paul Bunyan room? Of course, sweetie. That's where your daddy's meeting us at 4 o'clock, just as soon as his train gets in. Mmm. Boy, now that's a good cup of coffee. Must be a new percolator in the dining car. Uh, oh, excuse me, conductor. Uh, oh, conductor? Y uh, yes, sir, mister? It, it's Larson, Jim Larson. Well, uh, how can I help you, Mr. Larson? Well, I'm meeting my family in downtown Seattle this afternoon. And I wonder if you can tell me if the train is on time? Uh, let me see here. Quarter past 10 a.m. Long view. Uh, well, yep, yep, we're on time. And it's a good thing, too. I, I hear from dispatch that they're having snow flurries in Olympia with a chill wind blowing in from the north. Snow flurries, huh? Gee, maybe we'll have a white Christmas this year. My kids would love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I certainly remember the white Christmases we had growing up in Minnesota. 
Ice skating, sledding, snowmen, snowball fights. <laughs> you don't see much of that in rainy old Seattle, no, sir? No, uh, we sure don't. I can't even remember the last time it snowed on Christmas in Seattle. It's been years. Oh, no, no, Mr. Larson. Don't uh, don't go counting your chickens or, or your snowmen, for that matter. This Seattle snow is just as likely to turn into rain before we have a white Christmas. Still, it would be nice to see the trees and the lights all frosted with snow. Well, that it would, that it would. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to let you and the other passengers know if I hear anything more about the weather. Thanks. That'd be great. There's snow or no snow, I, I hope you have a Merry Christmas, Mr. Larson. And, and you too. In the days before weather satellites and Doppler radar, weather forecasting was much more of a guessing game than it is now. A snowstorm could strike with little warning and with little understanding of its severity. Unbeknownst to Jim, as his train made its way north, an icy mass of Arctic air was colliding with a typical moisture-laden Pacific storm, setting the stage for snow in the Puget Sound on Christmas Eve. Meanwhile, families all over the Northwest were making final preparations for Christmas. Last-minute trips to the grocery store, wrapping presents, stringing lights, putting the finishing touches on the tree. As twilight begins to settle over the Larson home, Sarah, Jake, and Susie are just about to leave home and head for downtown Seattle and the family's traditional Christmas Eve visit to Frederick and Nelson. Baby. Oh, it's cold outside. Susie, Jake, bring your hat, scarf, and mittens with you. I just went out to get the mail, and there is a nippy breeze blowing. Okay, Mom. Wow, look at all those packages. Any presents for me? Maybe a sweater from your grandma. Maybe a fruitcake for your father from Aunt Ellen. Oh, there'll be plenty of time to open presents later. Okay, I can wait. Sort of. <laughs> Jake, could you please turn off the hi-fi before we leave? Sure thing, Mom. We interrupt our program of holiday music for a special bulletin. The U.S. Weather Bureau is reporting heavy snowfall at the state capital in Olympia. Forecasters say that the storm may move north toward Tacoma and Seattle late this afternoon and early this evening. It looks like we could have ourselves a white Christmas, folks. Please stay tuned for the station for updated forecasts. We now return to our regularly scheduled program of holiday music. Coming up next at 4 o'clock, the original cast recording of Amal and the night visitors. My Jeepers, snow on Christmas Eve. We can go sledding, have a snowball fight. Hooray, I love snow. We can build a snowman, make snow angels. No in Seattle. Huh. You don't sound very excited, Mom. Oh, but I'm excited, Jake. I just hope we can meet your father and get home before it really starts to fall. Neither one of us is much of a snow driver. Maybe we can sled home. Yay. <laughs> well, we may have to. Come on, kids. Let's get in the car and get downtown. Downtown in the heart of Seattle's booming post-war retail district, the great flagship Frederick & Nelson store at Fifth Avenue and Pine Street is bustling with holiday shoppers. Elevators and escalators are carrying throngs of people up and down. In the gift wrapping department, experienced hands are using paper and cellophane tape to transform toys, clothing, appliances, and other gifts into colorful cubes. Within the store's restaurants, weary customers are gathering strength for the last push to finish holiday shopping for another year. Out on the sidewalk, kids and parents have been lining up all day to visit Santa Claus in his display window home. However, at the moment, Santa Claus who is known the rest of the year as Wally Raymond, is taking a much-needed break within the Frederick and Nelson Associates Lounge. His red and white hat and black shiny boots are off. His plush red coat with ivory fleece trim is draped over a chair. His beard rests on the table while he sips piping hot black coffee from a white porcelain cup. With him is co-worker and friend Ed Thomas, one of the trademark Frederick and Nelson doormen. My back is killing me, Ed. I think they're making kids just a whole lot heavier than they used to. <laughs> well, I'd be glad when today is over. Well, it's not over yet, Wally. You've still got three more hours out there with the kids. This is your biggest day of the year. You, my friend, are the star of the show right now. I know, I know. I've made my list. I've checked them twice. I know who I am, and I know who I can't be, and I can't let the little tykes down. Bad back or no? Well, that's more like it. 
But I'm sure looking forward to this party you've invited me to tonight. Uh, me too. Darlene and her friend Florence are expecting us to meet them at Darlene's place at 8 o'clock. We'll go to the party from there. Then it'll be time for Santa to celebrate. And did you say that Darlene said this Flo, ho, 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 is a real doll? A real Santa's little helper? Oh, uh, well, that's not exactly what Darlene said, but it's close enough. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell me more about Florence, Ed. Uh, <clears throat> uh, listen, Wally, you need to finish your coffee and get back out there. The line of kids is still stretched around the corner, and I need to get back to the front door. Oh! You said that Flo was a doll, and if she's not, you're getting a lump of coal in your stocking. Well, we're almost there, kids, but I sure don't like the looks of that sky. Maybe the radio announcer was right. Maybe we will have a white Christmas this year. I will hope we have snow, Mommy. It's so pretty. Mmm, it's pretty, but let's hope we can enjoy it at home. Susie, Mom, look at all the lights on the trees. Look at all those people carrying presents. I want to see Santa. I want to see Santa. We'll see him. We'll see him. He'll be in the window at Frederick's, like always. That's right, Susie. You can tell Santa what you'd like for Christmas, and we'll get our picture taken together. You, Jake, your daddy, and me. And maybe Uncle Mistletoe and Aunt Holly will read us a story. Maybe they'll have the reindeer and the penguins again this year. All right, here we are at the parking garage. I hope there's a parking spot left for us. We'll be right back with more of a green and white Christmas. You're listening to the Kixie Saturday Night Spotlight on AM 880 KIXI. Great songs, great memories, and your home for the holidays. We'll return to a green and white Christmas in just a moment. Christmas is coming. You better watch out. You better not cry. And so is the Kixie Christmas Collection CD Volume 2. You'll be delighted by our latest collection of classic carols and seasonal sing-along favorites from your favorite Kixie artists. Oh, the snowman. KIXI is proud to share the proceeds from sales of our Christmas Collection CD with Fair Start, a Seattle-based organization transforming the lives of disadvantaged men and women through job training and placement in the food services industry. The Kixie Christmas Collection CD Volume 2 is available at Silver Platters at Northgate, Bellevue, and South Center, the information booth at Factoria Mall, the Broderick Cafe, 2nd Avenue, and Pioneer Square, and at the Museum of History and Industry. You can also order online at KIXI.com. Put a little Kixie under your Christmas tree and enjoy a season full of great songs and great holiday memories from AM 880 KIXI. We now return to the Mohai Radio Theater presentation of a green and white Christmas. As Sarah, Jake, and Susie make their way from the parking garage to the street, lights twinkle in the darkening sky and snowflakes begin to fall on downtown Seattle. Hurrying across the 6th Avenue crosswalk to reach the main entrance of the store, the family is greeted by doorman Ed Thomas, back from his coffee break with Santa. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Frederick and Nelson, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. Can you please tell me what time Frederick and Nelson closes this evening? Why, the store closes at 6 o'clock, ma'am. It's uh, Christmas Eve, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, kids. Let's go see if your father's waiting for us in the Paul Bunyan room. For many Seattleites, Frederick and Nelson was the definitive place to shop and prepare for Christmas every year. With unsurpassed customer service, imaginative window displays, and lush interior decorations, Frederick's was a holiday tradition for many a Northwest family. While other stores and shopping centers appeared in the Seattle suburbs following World War II, Thousands of people continue to make a visit to the downtown Frederick and Nelson, part of their holiday ritual. I still don't see him anywhere, Mom. I don't either, Jake. It's almost 4.30. Where do you think Daddy is? I'm not sure, Susie. 
Oh, come on, kids. Let's go back to the main entrance and talk to that nice doorman. Maybe he can help us find your dad. Mom, listen to the choir and look at the snow falling outside. Oh, they sound terrific, honey. And you're right about that snow. It's cold enough to stick, too. There's the doorman, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Excuse me, Mr. Doorman? Yes, ma'am. May I help you? Oh, yes, I hope so. I'm here with my children, and we were supposed to meet my husband at 4 o'clock, but there is no sign of him, and it's nearly 5 now. You haven't seen him by any chance, have you? He's about 6 feet tall with sandy hair in a tan trench coat, a charcoal fedora, and carrying a brown leather suitcase. <laughs> Boy, there are a lot of people here today, ma'am, but I can't say that I've seen a man that fits that description exactly. He's supposed to be coming into King Street Station on the train. I tried phoning there, but I couldn't get through. We heard on the radio that there might be snow, and, well, it's snowing pretty hard now. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about the snow. It'll probably turn into rain before too long. Well, listen, I'll keep an eye out for your husband, and I'll alert my fellow doorman to do the same. My name is Ed Thomas. Uh, what's your husband's name, ma'am? It's Jim. Jim Larson. I'm Mrs. Larson, and this is Susie, and this is Jake. And it's nice to meet you, Mr. Thomas. Well, pleased to make your acquaintance, Mrs. Larson, Jake, Susie. As soon as Mr. Larson arrives, I'll make an announcement over the store's public address system and make sure that you find each other. <laughs> well, that would be a big help, Mr. Thomas. Well, now in the meantime, why don't you folks go and see Santa or take a tour of our decorations? I think the Frederick and Nelson Choral Society will be singing again in a few minutes. Don't worry. I know your daddy will be here in no time. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thanks for your help. Oh, you're welcome, Mrs. Larson. If you still can't find Mr. Larson, let's meet back here at 6 o'clock and decide what to do next. That's a good idea. Just in case. That's right. Just in case. <laughs> Mom, can we go and find a present for Dad? I mean, besides the stuff we made at school. Can we, Mom? I think that'd be nice. Can we go look for Can we go look for something for Daddy in the sports in the sporting goods department? Of course we can. Come on, Susie. On a snow-delayed northbound passenger train sitting idly on the tracks many, many miles south of Seattle's King Street Station, Mr. Larson is beginning to realize that this may be a Christmas Eve like no other. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, oh conductor. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Larson. Uh, can I help you? You got another question? Yeah, listen, I, I know the snowstorm is delaying the train. Do you happen to have any idea what time we'll make it into King Street Station? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Larson. There, there's no telling how late we might be. There, there's been a, a slide up near Windlock, and there are fallen trees in many places. Gosh, that sounds pretty bad. Uh, you see, I was supposed to meet my wife and children at Frederick and Nelson for dinner an hour ago, and I have no way of getting in touch with them to let them know where I I am. Well, uh, dispatch tells me the crew should, should have the tracks cleared soon. They're, they're working as fast as they can. Soon, huh? Well, nobody saw this storm coming. I'm afraid, Mr. Larson, you, you know how rarely we have a white Christmas or a white any day in Seattle. I sure do. I just hope I can be home to enjoy it. Well, I'm hoping that the missus and I will get to see the grandkids over in Kirkland. You're not sure we'll be able to make the drive from Seattle. You're not sure if we'll even get to see the missus tonight. No, sir. So it could be midnight before we get to Seattle. Well, I'm afraid it very well could be that late. Darn it. I, I certainly hope Sarah and the kids have sense enough to stay home, even though Christmas Eve at Frederick's is a family tradition. Uh, say, Mr. Conductor, is there a telephone anywhere that I could use? Well, uh, next station stop is Olympia. I, I, I could hold the train there for a few minutes, and you might be able to use the payphone on the platform. That'd be swell. I'd like to at least call home and let them know that I'm on my way. Yes, Mr. Larson, it, it seems that we're all just, just trying to get home tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I have to make a, a special announcement. Sure. Thanks for your help. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We appreciate your patience in the light of the snowstorm and the train's delay. I I can't say what time our next stop will be or when we'll reach the end of the line in Seattle. However, I would like to invite everyone into the dining car for a cup of hot cocoa. Compliments of the Northern Pacific Railroad. Meanwhile.
Meanwhile, back at Frederick and Nelson, the crowds that earlier swarmed the store are gone. The Uncle Mistletoe and Aunt Holly characters have put away their costumes and stories for another year. The members of the Frederick and Nelson Choral Society have closed their songbooks. But Santa Claus has two more visitors. Come on, kids. Even though your dad's not here, let's go see Santa. There's no line right now. Step right up, folks. Come on, Mom, don't be shy. Old Santa has time to talk to two more children before he has to head out into the snow snowstorm and get back up to the North Pole. And these two kids are in luck. Go on, Jake. Go on, Susie. You remember Santa. What's your name, little boy? Jake. And you, little girl? Susie. Well, Jake, let's chat with you first, shall we? <laughs> what would you like old Santa to bring you this year? Some snowshoes? A dog sled? A snow shovel? Maybe even a polar bear? Gosh, Santa, I've been thinking an awful lot about trains today. They've got some real nifty ones here in Toy Town. Well, I don't think trains would be a problem. No, sir. Have you been a good boy this year, Jake? Well, Santa, he's been just wonderful. Have you been as good as your little sister, Susie? Santa, we've both been awful good. But, Santa, I don't know what you can bring, but my brother and my mommy and I really want right now. And what's that, little girl? My daddy was supposed to meet us here a while ago, but he's somewhere in the snow, and we want him to come home. Oh, well, if there's one thing old Santa knows a thing to do about, it's snow. So don't you worry. Your daddy's going to be just fine. Just ha, ha, hold on. Daddy will be here just as soon as he can. Do you really mean it, Santa? Of course I do. Now you run along with your brother and your mom. Old Santa won't let you down. Come on, Susie. Jay. Merry Christmas, Santa. Thanks, Santa. Thank you, um, Mr. Claus. <laughs> You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Ha, ha, ha. Goodbye now. <laughs> Bye, Santa. My Lord, I hope that man shows up. Whew. Well, that's it for another year. Time for old Santa to hang it up until next Thanksgiving. Ho, 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 ho. Could my back use a break right about now? Oh, Mr. Claus. Yes, Mr. Doorman, sir. I'd like to be the first to congratulate you on another fine year as the Frederick and Nelson Santa Claus. Thank you, Ed. Thank you very much. Every kid in Seattle has given you their wish list. Every family in Seattle has had their picture taken with you. Yes, Mr. Claus, you are officially done until next Thanksgiving. So, come on, let's go. The store's closing in five minutes. I know, I know, I'm coming. Listen, Ed, you know that mother and kids waiting for their dad to show up? Yeah, the Larsons? Yeah, what about him? Any sign of the old man yet? No, no sign of him. Mm, I was pretty certain in telling those kids not to worry about their daddy. Told them no Santa knows about snow. Well, Santa, look around. There's nobody on the sidewalks or on the streets. Just a whole lot of snow. Well, now that you mention it, it is pretty deserted out there. Seattle's a ghost town right now. Kind of reminds me of what it was like during the war blackout. <laughs> you aren't whistling Dixie, Ed. Yes, sir. I don't blame those kids for worrying about their dad. Eh, me neither. I sure hope this Larson guy shows up. Santa's reputation is at stake. Speaking of which, I told Mrs. Larson that I'd meet her at the Fifth Avenue entrance at 6 o'clock. Hmm, that's a few minutes from now. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do if, if Mr. Larson doesn't show up real soon. Speaking of figuring out uh, what to do, are we all set for tonight? Have you talked to Darlene about me? <laughs> yeah, yep, I told you this already, didn't I? Anyway, we're supposed to be at Darlene's at 8 o'clock. Her friend Florence, your date for the evening, huh. will be there too. <laughs> Great. Uh, we'll go to the party from there. Tell me again what Florence is like. I can't wait to meet her. Well, of course, I, I haven't actually met her myself, but... What? Uh, you haven't met her? You told me she was a doll, a living, breathing doll. You told me you'd ask her out yourself if you and Darlene aren't, were, weren't already going steady. Well, it, it's true. I haven't met Florence, uh, but I trust Darlene. Uh, and Darlene tells me that Florence is very nice and very smart. The intellectual type. I think that's what Darlene said. She also said uh, Florence has dark hair and wears cat eye glasses. What? The intellectual type? Very nice, very smart. 
<laughs> what have you gotten me into, Ed? Uh, I guess we'll both find out at 8 o'clock. You can't back out now with only two hours' notice. Right now, though, I've got to get over to the front door to meet Mrs. Larson. Snow continues to fall across the Puget Sound region with no sign of letting up. Major highways and many roads are all but impassable. Flights have been canceled in and out of local airports. Trains, including the one carrying Jim Larson for Seattle, are far behind schedule. Well, uh, here we are, Mr. Larson. Olympia Station. There's a payphone over there on the north end of the platform. Where? Oh, I, I see it. I'll, I'll hold a train for a few minutes. We're, we're so late, it won't make much difference to anyone now. Ah, thanks. I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Okay. Ooh, man, it's cold out. All right, here's the phone. This is the operator. How may I help you? Uh, yes. Uh, hello? I'm trying to reach my home in Seattle. Can I call Collect to Atwater 3474, please? Who shall I say is calling? Uh, Jim. J just say it's Jim. Connecting, sir. Oh, darn it. I'm sorry, sir. The circuits are busy on account of the snowstorm. Is there another number that you would like to try? Um, okay. Okay. How, how about Frederick and Nelson in downtown Seattle? I, I don't have the number, but it's... it's. One moment, please, while I consult directory assistance. Oh, fine, fine. Who shall I say is calling? Uh, Jim Larson looking for Sarah Larson. That would be person to person, sir, and higher charges will apply. Oh, that, that's fine. Connecting, sir. Busy circuits again, sir, on account of the storm. Anyone else you'd like to try? Uh, no, operator. No, thank you. Darn it. I, I mean, Merry Christmas. I'll just get back on the train and get to Seattle as soon as I can. Sarah and the kids could be home, or they could be waiting for me at the store. Uh, only one way to find out. I'll have to go to Frederick's myself. Oh, boy. We'll be right back with more of a green and white Christmas. Welcome back to the Mohai Radio Theater production of a green and white Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Frederick and Nelson is now closing so that our employees may enjoy Christmas Eve with their families and loved ones. Please join us again on December 26th when our doors will open at 10 a.m. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Hello, Mrs. Larson. Any sign of your husband yet? No, but I heard someone say that it's snowing all the way from Portland to Bellingham and that there are trees and lines down everywhere. I tried calling the train station again, but all I got was a busy signal. I'll bet a lot of people are having a hard time getting home tonight. If it's really snowing as much as you've heard, it's easy to imagine trains delayed all up and down the tracks. Mr. Dorman, Santa says Daddy's going to be all right. He did? Well, if Santa said so, then it must be so. He also said he's going to bring me a train set. I just wish he could bring Daddy's train. I know Santa pretty well, and I know he'll do all he can. Thanks for your kind words, Mr. Thomas. I guess we're going to try and find a restaurant nearby that's still open where we can wait. The kids are hungry, and I know the store is closed, so we'd better be going. Listen, Mrs. Larson, this is probably against store policy, but you're welcome to stay here for a while. I don't have to be anywhere for a few hours, and... I hate the thought of you out in the storm with your kids, especially if Mr. Larson shows up and you're not here to meet him. You're awfully kind, but we couldn't impose. Ah, it's no imposition, ma'am, really. Please, Mom, please let us stay here and wait for Daddy. I, oh, I really don't know what to do. Even if I could drive in the snow, I wouldn't want to leave here without Jim. But the kids are hungry, so... Hey, uh, I have an idea for dinner, too. Give me a minute here with a house phone. Oh, Sally? Yeah, this is Ed at the main entrance. I know it's after closing time, but I've got three very hungry folks up here who'd love to pay a visit to the Paul Bunyan room. Yeah, 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 it's kind of an emergency. I'll explain later. Uh, do you mind whipping up a few sandwiches and some 
Frango milkshakes for these folks? Oh, you don't mind. You're the greatest, Sal. They'll be right down. You're very sweet, Mr. Thomas. Please, just call me Ed. And come back and find me here when you've finished your dinner. Yay, dinner in the Paul Bunyan room. <laughs> thank you, Ed. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you folks later. Boy, I sure hope Daddy shows up soon. Oh, Ed. Oh, Mr. Doorman. Wally, you've already changed out of your Santa suit. I wanted you to have a talk to the Larson kids some more while we waited for their dad. Waited for their dad? The store's closed, Ed, and we got a date to get to. Don't worry. We'll get there eventually. We got to leave pretty soon. It's not going to be easy going in this snow. We might have a pretty tough time of it. Well, that's not what you told the Larson kids about their dad in the snow. They told me you said he'd be fine. Oh, geez, don't beat me up about that. I didn't know what else to tell them. I didn't want them to be sad. Well, they believed you. Good, good. They're gone right now, huh? No, I just couldn't turn them out into the snow. Mrs. Larson can't get through to anyone off the railroad, and she doesn't want to try to drive in this weather. Well, I don't blame her. Snow is nasty, nasty stuff. And she wants to be here when her husband shows up, not out somewhere in the snow. Well, that makes sense. So I sent them down to get dinner from Sally. Good old Sal. They'll be back, and I have a feeling they're going to need something to take their minds off the storm, and they're missing Dad. I bet you're right. Is your Santa suit put away yet? No. I can change back into it if I have to. Good. Why do I have a feeling that I won't be meeting this intellectual type tonight? <laughs> Now, kids, thanks a nice lady for the tasty dinner. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome, Mrs. Larson, Susie, Jake. When Ed called up and said you folks needed dinner, I was happy to oblige. He's the nicest man. Anyway, I had some time before I had to head over to see my folks. We really appreciate the hospitality. Thank you again. Oh, you're very welcome. I hope you have a nice evening and a safe trip home. Thanks, Mrs. Larson. You too. Come on, kids. Let's go meet Mr. Thomas, uh, Ed, <laughs> at the main entrance. Maybe, just maybe, your father is here by now. If Daddy's not here yet, maybe we can go to Toy Town again. Yay! <laughs> I'd like to see the dolls one more time. <laughs> now, kids, remember, we really shouldn't be here now like this. We know, Mommy, but this is a good place to wait for Daddy. Yes, Jake. But poor Ed probably has his own family to get home to. So, what are we going to do, Mommy? I don't know. I just wish I could think of some place for us to go. But I hate the thought of your father coming here and not finding us. Oh, there's Ed. Hello, Mrs. Larson. Hi, kids. Hello, Ed. Any sign of my husband? Uh, not yet, not yet. But I'm working on finding you a place to stay. I tried to call the hotel over there on the next corner, but their phone is busy. Could be that the circuits are overloaded because of the storm. Anyway, I couldn't get through to the train station either. Santa, <coughs> I mean, <coughs> my co-worker, Mr. Raymond, left a few minutes ago to walk over to the hotel to see if they might have a room available for you and the kids. How nice of him. He didn't have to do that. Well, we could have checked ourselves. Oh, oh, here comes Mr. Raymond now. Dad, blame it, it's a veritable blizzard out there. I've never seen so much snow. Ho, 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 ho. Gee, that more that man's voice sure sounds familiar. Shh, Susie. Thank you so much for going out in the storm for us, Mr. Raymond. Well, think nothing of it, nothing of it. And you can call me Wally. Were you able to find a hotel room? I'm sorry, ma'am. They're full up with holiday visitors and stranded businessmen. <sighs> the disc desk clerk told me that every hotel room in Seattle is full tonight. Every room is full? Yes, ma'am. Every room in the city. Oh, well, even so, it was awfully kind of you to try. Oh, I don't mind. I wanted to see what it was like out there anyway. Ed and I have to head out into the storm again in a few minutes anyway. You do? Uh, oh, well, oh. it's true, Mrs. Larson. We do have a previously scheduled engagement, but with a storm and all, we may have to cancel. How's that? What'd you say, Ed? Uh, nothing, Wally. Just give me a minute. All right, all right. Now, Mrs. Larson, I think I have an idea for where you folks can stay tonight while we wait for Mr. Larson. 
Please, come with me. You too, Susie and Jake. You too, Wally. Welcome to the sixth floor home of Frederick and Nelson's furniture department. Ah, uh, yes, I know it well. Well, they've got a nice little model home set up back here. Perfect for modern living and complete with a family room. Here's a sofa, two armchairs, reading lamps, a hi-fi set, television, even a Christmas tree and artificial fireplace. <laughs> well, this is very nice. Jim and I have bought a lot of furniture here over the years. But why are you showing it to us now? Well, you folks need a place to stay while you wait for Mr. Larson, so I thought... Oh! Well, but surely we can't just camp here in the store. Why not? Yeah, Mommy, why not? Well, uh, oh, we need to let Mr. Raymond and Mr. Thomas go to their previous engagement. Ma'am, Wally and I will be perfectly content helping you get settled in. So you feel right at home here at Frederick and Nelson until Mr. Larson arrives. Oh, but Mr. Thomas, oh... Can we please, Mom? Well, after you settle in, Wally and I will retire to the first floor where we can keep watch for Mr. Larson. Family should be together on Christmas Eve no matter what. Ed, we've got to talk. <laughs> Could you come this way for a moment, please? Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Larson. Listen, Wally, trust me on this one. You don't really want to meet this Florence, this intellectual type. <laughs> really? But you said... Forget what I said. I lied. Anyway, it's a blizzard outside. Why don't you uh, uh, see if Santa Claus is still around? Huh? How many times do I have to ask you to go and change back into your Santa suit? Do I have to? I need you to come back and spend some time with the kids. They're upset about their dad and could use a distraction. You're right, you're right. That's a good idea. Especially since old Santa promised them that their dad would be okay. Mm, finally. But wait a minute. I want to talk to you about Flo. Uh, really we'll uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit later. No. You can go change now. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, as I was saying, Mrs. Larson, uh, it'll be no trouble at all for you to stay here tonight. Are you sure, Mr. Thomas? Mr. Raymond seems upset. <laughs> well, trust me. Wally will be fine. And I'm sure your husband will be here before too long. There's no sense of trying to get home now. It's still snowing and the roads are probably a mess. I certainly am grateful not to have to drive in this. The whole family can make this their, uh, can make their way home safely in the daylight hours. Oh, I still don't think this is right, Mr. Thomas, but I'm grateful for it. We can't thank you enough. Oh, you're very welcome. Now, why don't you take Susie and Jake down to the third floor sleepwear department to get some pajamas, robes, and slippers. <laughs> I'll get this place ready. Make sure the lamps light and find a space heater that works. <laughs> well, how should I pay for the clothes we take? Ah, don't worry about that now. Just settle up with a cashier next time you're in the store during regular business hours. Okay. Uh, well, should we keep the price tag? Oh, that'd be fine. Okay. If you need me, I'll be downstairs at the main entrance keeping an eye out for Mr. Larson just as soon as I get some Christmas music tuned in on this hi-fi set. Gee, Mom, this is going to be fun. We've never spent Christmas Eve in a department store before. <laughs> well, this is certainly a first for the Larson family, that's for sure. Mr. Thomas sure is nice. Yes, he is, sweetie. Well, come on. Let's go find some pajamas. And let's get some for Daddy, too. <laughs> that's a terrific idea, Susie. <laughs> Oh, Eddie. Oh, Mr. Doorman. How goes the dad watch? Well, no sign of him yet. Just more and more snow. Gosh, it's almost 11 o'clock. That late already? Yep. How's the rest of the Larson family? Well, the little girl's asleep with a doll we picked out in Toy Town. Mom's reading. Jake's still awake, listening to the radio. He beat me five times at checkers, but I cleaned up when we played marble. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they've settled in just fine. That they are. Well, I finally got through to Darlene on the telephone. And? She and Flo stayed in. Darlene says there's more than a foot of snow on Queen Anne Hill. She also said the party was canceled, but we've got a rain check for New Year's Eve. A rain check for intellectual Florence? No thanks. Fine. 
I'll see if Charlie over in Men's Furnishings is doing anything on New Year's Eve. I'll bet Charlie'd love to meet Flo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Count me in, count me in. I've got nothing against smart women. All right, calm down, Santa. <laughs> calm down, Santa, you're in. Fine. That's better. Sheesh. Hanging <laughs> up in this bickering with you on Christmas Eve reminds me of Italy in 44. <laughs> you know, we get stuck with guard duty while the other guy's got to go to the USO show and have turkey dinner? <laughs> you, you're right. I think even when you were, then you were trying to talk me into some kind of double date with a couple of wax. Hard to believe it's been ten years already. Well, at least we made it home alive. Well, yeah, that we did, that we did. Yeah, and I have to say it's been a pretty good ten years. I can't complain, can't complain either. No, no, me neither. But sometimes I sort of wish I had a wife and kids waiting for me to make it home on Christmas Eve. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. But we've still got plenty of time to settle down. No, my friend, not as many years as you'd think. I mean, we blinked and it's 1954. Next week it's going to be 1955. 1955. Pretty soon it'll be the year 2000. And we'll both be old men. Well, I hope so. I'm telling you, Ed, as much as I complain about our little family due tonight, this has been a wake-up call. I guess I know what you mean. Me and Darlene have talked about setting a date, but that's all we've ever done. Just talk. Maybe this Flo and I'll hit it off, and then we can have a big double wedding oh, next June. Oh, 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 hold your horses there, Wally. Don't get all sentimental on me yet. Let's get through New Year's Eve first. We'll be right back with more of a green and white Christmas. And you're listening to A Green and White Christmas on AM 880 KIXI, your home of great songs and great memories. A quick reminder that next week in the Kixie Saturday Night Spotlight, we'll be enjoying Kixie's 88 Hours of Christmas. Non-stop Christmas music to take you right through the long Christmas holiday weekend. Hope you enjoy that, and in the meantime, let's return for the final portion of tonight's Kixie Saturday Night Spotlight. We go back to the Museum of History and Industry in Seattle. We now return to Mohai History Theater's presentation of a green and white Christmas. Here I finally am, King Street Station. Hmm, 11 o'clock. The train was only eight hours late. Well, I'll just get my bag from the station attendant and be on my way. Good evening, sir. Your name, please? Uh, Larson, Jim Larson. I have one suitcase to pick up, and then I'm headed out. You're headed where? You won't find any taxis or buses outside, Mr. Larson. We've had more than a foot of snow. Seattle's completely shut down. You'd be better off staying here. Stay here? At the train station? Yeah, don't worry. We've arranged for food and blankets. The Northern Pacific will take great care of you. Well, no offense, but I guess maybe I've been cooped up on the train for too long. I'm not going to stay in the station. Well, what are you going to do? Well, all right, first I need to make a telephone call. Then I'll know how far I have to walk. Mm, okay. Pay phones are down along the rear wall. Over that way. No, thank you, and Merry Christmas. You too, Mr. Larson. Good luck. Oh, man. Spend the night. Christmas Eve. In the train station. Well, let's see. A local call will take just a nickel. I got change from the dining car in here somewhere. Now, right, here we go. at home. Now that means they must still be at Frederick's or some place between there and home. So if I'm going to find them, I got to start looking at Fifth and Pine. Uh, sir, you sure you don't want to stay here at the station? There's no use going out in this terrible weather. Well, thank you, but it's Christmas Eve and I've got to meet my wife and kids at Frederick and Nelson. I can walk. It's only 20 blocks. Oh, sir, the stores are closed hours ago. You won't find anyone there now. Thinking. These shoes weren't meant for walking. 
sinking in the snow. Doggone it! his way north from the train station through a windy, cold, white, and unrecognizable downtown Seattle, singing every song he can think of that makes reference to snow. Oh, man. Oh. Okay, I, phew, I'm almost here. Just a couple of more blocks to go. Let me see. Let me see. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know. I've done that one already. Uh, walking in the winter wonderland that one two oh man jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way oh what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh oh yeah i did that one a couple of times now uh, okay. uh, silver bells silver bells oh, it's christmas time in the city okay okay maybe not uh, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, no, not that one again. Wait a minute. There's Frederick and Nelson up ahead, I think. It's hard to tell for sure in all this snow. One more block to go. Oh, gosh, it's almost midnight. Well, maybe that station attendant was right. I'll bet there's nobody here. a Frederick and Nelson doorman leaning against the desk in there. <laughs> and, and that's... Why, why that's Santa Claus! Uh, excuse me! Excuse me! I know the store's closed, but can you tell me if a lady and two children left a message for me? Come inside and get out of that snow. You must be Mr. Larson. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Oh, I am. I, I am Jim Larson. Merry Christmas to you, but... How in the world did you know my name? Please, come right this way, Mr. Larson. I'm Ed Thomas, one of the Frederick and Nelson doormen. I'd also like you to meet Wally Raymond, better known as Frederick and Nelson Santa Claus. Nice to meet you, Santa. Uh, Mr. Raymond, Mr. Thomas. Good to know you, too, Mr. Larson. Your family is waiting for you upstairs. Come with us. Man and Santa lead Mr. Larson toward the sixth floor and tell him of his family's travails. A wave of relief washes over the exhausted traveler. Then, Mr. Larson suddenly remembers an important task also delayed by the storm. Look, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Raymond, I feel, uh, well, <laughs> silly about this, but I need to ask a special favor, even though it's late. Please call me Ed. And call me Wally. Okay, okay, thanks, Ed. Thanks, Wally. Now, what's the favor? Well, being stuck on the train and all, I didn't get a chance to do any of my Christmas shopping today. Would you mind if we made a couple of stops here in Fredericks? By all means. We can take you to Toy Town for the kids. Then we can find something nice for Mrs. Larson. We'll get you fixed up. You don't worry about uh, that. Great. Let me, let me find my checkbook. Uh, it's in my briefcase. No, it's no, 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 Mr. Larson. Don't worry about that now. We know you're good for it. You just pay the cashier next time you're in the store. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. And please, call me Jim. Come on, then, Jimbo. Let's finish your shopping and get your gifts wrapped before Christmas Eve is over. It's almost midnight. Okay. Um... My gosh, I'm a, I'm a little frazzled. I, I, I hope I can remember what Susie and Jake want for Christmas. Don't worry. I talk to your kids tonight a lot. So I know exactly what they want. And I'll go glue my beard back on and give them a big Santa surprise. Come this way, Jim. Toy Town awaits. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Jake, I think I hear something. Go back to sleep. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you better watch out. You better not cry. I heard it again. It's Santa. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You're right, Susie. I hear it too. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Mmm, kids. <laughs> Go back to sleep. But, Mom, it's Santa Claus. Oh, oh I must have fallen asleep. Ooh. Is it morning already? Oh, 
<laughs> Look, everybody. Look who old Santa found out in the snow. Hello, everybody. Daddy! Santa found Daddy! Jim! Just like Santa promised. <laughs> That's right. Old Santa won't steer you wrong. Kids, Sarah, I can't believe I'm finally home. <laughs> oh, Jim, you're here. I'm so glad to see you. Sarah, Jake, Susie, it's so good to see you guys. I thought I was going to break our family tradition and not make it to Frederick's on Christmas Eve. Oh. Hey, kids, why don't you uh, come over by the tree and see what else Santa bought you? Oh, boy, Griffin! Oh, uh, Mr. Doorman, why don't you come over here with us, too, Ed? Oh, of course, of course. Ed? Oh. Of course. Oh, Jim, we missed you so much. I was so worried about you. Oh, me too. I don't know what we would have done without Mr. Thomas and Mr. Raymond. They really saved everything. They told me all about it. I can't believe that they let you stay here and that they set up this wonderful little home, too. They even helped me with my shopping and gift wrapping. They did? Oh, they sure did. Oh, this is going to be the best Christmas ever, now that you're here. Oh, hon, you won't believe what I've been through tonight. The train was stuck for hours. Then they tried to make me stay at the station. Oh, the wind was howling, the snow soaked into my shoes. But I just had to make it to Frederick's for Christmas Eve to be with you and the kids. I'm so glad we didn't have to leave the store. I knew you'd come here first. I tried to call, but the circuits were busy. Thank goodness you found these two guys. Can we do something nice for Mr. Thomas and Mr. Raymond? I think they gave up a previous commitment, too. I think they had some kind of double date that they canceled. Well, maybe we can return the favor. Uh, I have an idea. What's your idea? You'll see. Oh, uh, Mr. Doorman, Mr. Claus, would you be so kind as to honor us with your uh, presence for Christmas dinner? We can't begin to thank you for all you've done tonight. Oh, you don't have to do that, Mr. Larson, but... Seeing as how I don't have any other plans... Oh, you're also very welcome to bring your families, of course. We'll have turkey and all the trimmings, two kinds of pie... Ooh, some... I'd love to join you. What about you, Santa? Well, Mrs. Claus and I, I would each be delighted. You think Darlene and Florence are available? Well, uh, maybe if you're a good boy. Neat, wait till the other kids hear that Santa's coming to dinner. Yay! Santa Claus is coming to our house! Now, now, kids. Santa Claus will be off duty tomorrow and probably be dressed in his civilian clothes. Anyway, let's get you two back to bed. We've got a busy morning ahead of us tomorrow. We have to drive home in the snow and then open all the presents under the tree in our real living room. Jim, you did make it to Frederick's on Christmas Eve. Now Christmas is here, and we're all together. Merry Christmas, hon. Merry Christmas, everybody. You've been listening to A Green and White Christmas, written and directed by Felix Van El transcribed for radio before a live audience at the Museum of History and Industry in Seattle. The cast included Chris Wiedis as the doorman. Bob Newman as Santa Claus. Tracy Conway as Sarah Larson. Dave DeLackey as Jim Larson. Nick Thompson as Jake. And Christina Frost as Susie. Also appearing were Rick Becker, Bob Brooks, and Christy Miller. Sound and music was by Steve Dunstan. Sound effects by David Person. This is your announcer, Jim Day, speaking, bidding you good night and Merry Christmas. Dear to the Kixie Weather Center with the forecast for the Puget Sound area and that wind we felt this afternoon. 
It won't be with us tonight. Replace the word wind with breezy tonight, and the rain will let up just a bit, too, leaving us with showers low of 35 tonight. By tomorrow, the wind will have passed, mostly cloudy, with a few showers and a high of 45 for Sunday. Remember, when it comes to great songs and great memories, the Puget Sound area comes to Kixie AM 880-KIXI. AM 880-KIXI, Mercer Island, Seattle, Tacoma. by Cruise West right here Sunday mornings at 8 on AM 880 KIXI. That's where you are this morning. We appreciate that. It's 7.15. I'm Jim Day. Windy this morning. Scattered showers. Clearing periods. All of that adding up to about 44 this afternoon. 37 degrees. Right now at Kixie, now, this is exciting for me because I guess, I guess about 20 years ago, I got a job working at a radio station here in Seattle, and they also own Channel 7 in Seattle. And I remember coming home from uh, my first couple of weeks at, at work at this place, and I was just so excited to tell my wife, you know who I met there at the TV station? Mm-hmm. J.P. Patches. Oh, yeah. And I'm not kidding yeah. you. That I, I was as excited as uh, anybody I've ever met to run into J.P. Patches, who I grew up watching. Well, yeah. you know what? We got Chris Wiedis, who, of course, portrayed J.P. on TV, yeah. on the line with us this morning because Chris is going to be one of the stars in our big... Uh, a radio show that we're going to tape tomorrow. We're going to get together tomorrow and tape this radio play and then play it uh, tomorrow night right here on Kixie. And, and we're going to start tomorrow at the... Um, uh, <laughs> Chris, I, I forget where we're supposed to be. Well, you better remember because uh, you're... Uh Aren't you the announcer? I am. Mr. I've been practicing too, Chris. It uh, was a dark and stormy night. Oh, it's not actually Wait, in that's the script, not in the script. <laughs> you have the at, wrong script. At the Museum of uh, <laughs> History and Industry. Right, the museum. Uh, and uh, we were there for uh, a rehearsal. Where the heck were you? Oh, I, I got stuck. I got sick. So oh. I got the flu. Uh-huh. The flu. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm so not going to get close to you. I'll be hugging you a lot, Chris, tomorrow. <laughs> We better have different mics. <laughs> <laughs> have you done something like this before? Well, I, I did a Jim French uh, uh, play uh, mm -hmm. a year or so ago. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, I, I started in radio. Really? I didn't know that. Yes, I started in radio in Minnesota in uh, my first radio job. Well, actually in college, uh, there were four of us that started a, a campus radio station. And then I got a job in Mankato, Minnesota, and then I did some work in Minneapolis, and uh, then got into television. So that's it. A that's my life course. story. Telev <laughs> <laughs> television has definitely changed over the years. Oh, it's for the better. Has. What do you think, Chris? Pardon? For the better or for worse? Oh, I, I, I think both. You know, uh, you know, there there's so many channels now. I mean, if you don't like. Uh, <laughs> One thing, you know, in the old days, the, there were probably only three or four stations. Now, you know, there are <laughs> 50. <laughs> yeah, oh, at least. At you least. Know, so, so there's something for everyone. Well, we look forward to getting together with you. Now, this is open to the public, correct? Yes. And uh, it uh, starts at 1 o'clock. Uh, no. No, the play uh, is at, uh, I forget what time, 3 o'clock. I think we have to be there at 1. I think for we a rehearsal. do, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's at 3 o'clock, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, the uh, uh, radio show will be uh, open to the public, so get there early. I and guess that means I should start looking at the script and memorize my lines, huh? Well, no, you can read them. <laughs> <laughs> Only if they make the uh, print just a little bigger. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be fun for people to show, uh, show up and see an actual radio show and see how it's done. And, and uh, you know what? The big star is going to be my granddaughter. She's in it. Ooh. Oh, that's great. How yeah. old is she? She's eight. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, she plays the, the, the part of Sarah, and uh, I'm Ed, and she keeps calling me Ed. I said, no, 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 my name is Chris. She says, oh, no, your name is Ed. So she's really into it. <laughs> uh, she'll remember who you are on Christmas Eve. When you, uh, I think so. Presents. 
Well, Chris, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and everybody's invited to join us. We're going to broadcast that uh, entire radio play tomorrow night at 9 o'clock right here at Kixie. Oh, that's great. Thanks for talking to us, Chris. Nice man. Very nice Wonderful, man. wonderful guy. Matter of fact, I'm going to gift pack four passes to the museum to see our uh, performance of this radio play. Preferred seating, that means up front with no gum on your seat. And also a limited edition uh, of Frederick and Nelson's Centennial Book. And uh, we'll give that away to the, uh, let's make it the fifth caller this morning at uh, 1-800-491-KIX. If you'd like to join us and, and Chris Wiedis and uh, the whole gang as, as we uh, tape that radio play tomorrow at the Museum of History and Industry. And if you'd like the goodies and a, a gift pack of four passes to join us, call her five at 1-800-491-KIXI. <laughs>